Hey beautiful people, I'm a relatively new runner. Uh, the gyms were closed where I live, the yoga studios were closed. So I got up one morning and just went for a run. I could not run much. Long story short, through many ups and downs, I'm here now, very excited to start my fifth full marathon, just a couple of hours. It's around 5 a.m. and uh, the race starts at 7 a.m. When I started running, a uh, marathon was never a plan. It's only about five, six months ago that I started thinking about, oh, maybe I should run a marathon. I didn't know what was in store for me. So when I did my first marathon, it was a lot of pressure. I didn't know what to expect, but it ended up being such a beautiful experience. It was hard, especially the last 10K, last 10 kilometers, it was really, really hard for me. And uh, what kept me going was all the stretching I do, the yoga routine, breathing. Breathing was a big part of um, me being able to finish that first marathon and every marathon since then and every run, small or big. So just wanted to share some of that with you. I just wanted to share with all of you my yoga routine because my practice of yoga and meditation and breathing, they have really helped me staying in this game called running. <laughs> and uh, I thought I'll share with you for all the marathoners or would-be marathoners out there. I hope this will be of some help to you. So I woke up around 4.30 a.m. Uh, the race starts at 7 a.m. I uh, took a warm shower, just my routine and uh, started with hydration. So I start by sitting like this uh, through for all of my yoga practices because it helps me just release any tension, any stress that builds up when we sleep around our knees, around our hip joints. So this is a good way to start warming up the body, especially the joints. And I'm, as you can see, I'm sitting on my front of or the shoelace side of my feet. Alternatively, you can simply sit like this. Just left heel in front of your perineum and right leg in front of that. And you can simply take a relaxed seated pose. I start all of my yoga practices with some breathing. And especially on the race day, what I'm trying to do is just reset my breath and remind myself that breathing is going to be a very important part when the excitement begins. Because when the excitement begins, we are looking at people and it's amazing and we are running and then the half marathon mark and then after that 30K comes and 32K comes. Sometimes it's, it's just natural to just lose a sense of your breathing uh, and it's automatic. But the more aware you are, um, in my experience, it's it's, it's helped me pull through some of the challenging parts of the full marathon. So I start reminding myself uh, about the importance of awareness of breathing and um, not breathing too shallow uh, or too rapid, just keeping a consistent breath flow as much as I can. So it starts right here, about a couple of hours before the marathon even begins. So take your seat. A comfortable seat softly close your eyes rest your hands spine straight neck relaxed and start connecting with your natural breathing I will guide you through a simple breathing practice just to reset your breath and this is the counting method Simply follow my instructions. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. And continue like this.
Now we'll make the exhales longer. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And continue for a few breaths like that. Remember, longer exhales. Come back to equal breathing. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Continue for a few breaths. You can go back to this breathing practice anytime during the race. If you feel stressed, feel challenged, and feel tired, just practice breathing with full consciousness. Slowly, very slowly, open your eyes. What I have learned is that the breath can take you through the challenging moments, especially in context of marathon. I don't have a ton of experience. I've run four full marathons until now. And sometimes that challenging moment came around 20 kilometers. And one time it came around 27 kilometers. And the last marathon I did, it came around 32 kilometers. And that can come in different shapes and forms. Uh, it could be your legs, thighs, and sometimes strange thing happens. Remember, if you focus on your breath, your breath is going to pull you through these challenges. And this is uh, what I want to share with you. And it's good to start your day with a breathing practice anyways, especially on the race day, just to remind yourself. And uh, so that you go prepared with your best breath. And so that you go prepared with full awareness of your breath. And after my breath practice, I start my physical practices or asana practices. Asana means seat. I start in a child pose, seated in a wide legged child pose. Knees are to the width of the mat. I'm seated on my heels to start and slowly extend forward. And I'll be here just for three breaths. This helps me relax my lower back feel if there is any tension or pressure around my hip joints one more deep breath here and slowly come back up so before the marathon race my goal is not to stretch too much my goal is just to feel the main muscle blocks and my joints see how I'm doing because awareness is a big part of any yoga practice and especially when we are preparing for a challenge and this is a challenge which is a physical challenge plus a mental challenge and emotional challenge and energy challenge so there are a lot of challenges built into a full marathon also for half marathon when I did some half marathons these were all virtual half marathons uh, even that was a big challenge in the beginning that was more than a year ago so now on my palms palms by my sides i'm simply raising my hips and back raising my hips and back so this helps me just feeling my quads quadriceps muscles, the front of the thighs, just a few times, nothing too crazy. And from here, slowly come to tabletop on your hands and knees. You can tap your feet if you are seated like me. Wrist below your shoulders, knees below your hips, just a few cat cows, neutral spine to start. As you exhale, raise your spine to the sky, chin to chest, straight elbows, long arms. This is exhale, like a cat stretch. 
as you inhale other direction gaze forward like a cow's gaze or cow stretch continue if you cats and cows why are we doing cats and cows we are warming up our spine it's working on many muscles because when we run our shoulders our back also needs to be in good health otherwise shoulders can get tired and this can have an impact on your performance during the race so just activating muscles in the shoulders arms and around the spine inhale cow exhale cat i like to really warm up pace up my cats and cows especially on the race day it helps me warm up my spine slowly i'm already feeling warming up and come to neutral spine from here as you inhale press into your palms tuck your toes as you exhale push your hips back and up down dog you can paddle your feet here for three breaths try to work on the calves the hamstrings the glutes now as you inhale come to high plank as you exhale knees to the ground just chin as you inhale baby cobra palms by your sides in line with your shoulders as you inhale lift your chin and chest off the floor gaze forward palms by your sides baby cobra bhujangasana as you exhale hips back and up down dog So you can repeat this a few times. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, pelvis. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, down dog. So these baby co cobra flows they can help you these baby cobra flows they can help you just warm up your whole system your core your arms your wrists ankles calves down dog as you exhale three breaths in down dog So baby cobras down dogs so if you down dogs baby cobras that's a good way to just get aligned get ready get moving and after this part of my routine i focus on a couple of yoga practices just to start firing up my hands and my glutes because we are going to need these hands and glutes uh, on the race day uh, this is where most of the running energy comes from so there are a few specific practices which i start with and then i will get going the next few practices i focus on firing up my hamstrings and my glutes because we are going to need these <laughs> during the day and i simply focus on firing up my hams and glutes because we are going to need these most of running energy it comes from hamstrings and glutes so you need to engage them before the race starts and uh, for me it starts a couple of hours before the race the next few practices i simply focus on firing up my hamstrings and glutes you don't want to overdo this the idea is simply to engage uh, your hams and glutes for me a couple of yoga exercises is a good way to begin and then i will do it again as i go to the course uh, just before the race begins 
and uh, there will be more stretching after the ace finishes. So I'm already becoming aware, I'm already thinking about my day, how it's going to unfold and just focusing on what is in my control and then just go and enjoy it. So how I start is I come to lie down on my belly. Arms forward. Come to lie on your belly. Extend your arms in front of you. Stretch your fingers, chin to the mat. As you inhale, raise both legs to start. Keep your forearms and palms on the ground. Point your toes. And just breathe here. Five deep breaths. And relax your legs, relax your arms. Three breaths here. Just relaxing and nourishing breaths. And then extend your arms again in front of you. With your next inhale, lift both legs off the floor and then lift your chest and chin off the floor as your arms, your forearm, your palms also come up. Five deep breaths here. You start feeling that your glutes, your hands, they've started to get engaged here. One more breath and relax. To relax, you can keep your forehead on your hands or you can put right here or left here on the ground. Three deep breaths here. Now bring your arms by your sides. We'll repeat this locust pose again. Shola Basana. Chin to the mat to start. Back of your hands on the mat to start. Or you can keep them on the side. There are no strict rules. Just work on your alignment. Be with your breath and enjoy the practice that's yoga as you inhale lift everything off the ground gaze forward or you can close your eyes simply breathe 10 more deep breaths here One more breath and relax your forehead on your hands or one ear to the ground. One more breath here and we'll practice this one more time. I like this because I don't want to waste too much energy before the race, but also want to engage my glutes, my hamstrings, my spine, 
activate my spine so this is a great practice so this is an efficient practice shalabhasana so take a deep inhale and lift everything off the ground one more time gaze forward maybe you can give a bigger lift this time with every inhale your chest rising as you exhale gentle relaxation staying up five more breaths your shoulders are open wide one more breath and relax one ear to the ground or forehead on your hands one more breath here and then roll onto your mat as you come to lie on your back and now doing some core core work so bend your legs and from here simply raise your back and your legs and come to boat pose <laughs> everybody's favorite pose boat pose Core muscle strength is also an important part of your running efficiency. Important to engage. So we worked on alignment. We worked on breathing. We have worked on engaging hams and glutes. My hams and glutes, they are already feeling active now. Getting there. <laughs> You can make the boat pose dynamic. Bring your right knee in and then left knee in and keep going for a few reps. If you're practicing with me, maybe your core is already feeling activated so you keep going for a few more breaths five more breaths extend both legs count down 10 to 1 go down slowly 9 8 7 6 five four three two and one point your toes arms behind your head grab your index fingers take a deep inhale through your nose and out through your mouth let any doubts go inhale through your nose out through your mouth let everything go as you prepare for your race. Inhale through your nose and out. <sighs> Arms by your sides. We'll practice bridge pose. This is also a good way to activate your glutes. So bend both legs. So the next practice is bridge pose. This is also a good way to activate your glutes and your hands. Also works on other muscle blocks. Bend both legs, feet hip distance apart. So for alignment, you can use the fingertips 
For alignment, you can use your fingertips and see where they are in relation to the back of your heels. They should just be, just barely be in touch with the back of your heels. So now that you have done the alignment check, as you inhale, raise your pelvis, then your middle back, then start bringing your shoulder blades together. Bring your hands under your back and interlace your fingers beneath your back. Or you can also grab the edges of your mat for strength. One more thing, check your knees. Your knees have tendency to drift apart. So you keep your knees pointed at each other for a strong bridge. Bring shoulder blades closer if you can. And now close your eyes or keep them open five deep breaths. And now with eyes open or closed, five deep breaths. With every inhale, squeeze the big muscles in your glutes. And as you exhale, relax. Inhale. And relax. Inhale. And relax. Two more breaths. And relax. One last. And relax. As you exhale, start releasing your hands, your upper back, middle back, lower back. Bring your feet wide, knees to touch, and take windshield wiper movements on each side by bringing your legs to your left side and then your right side. A couple more times. Extend both legs. You can repeat bridge one more time and make it more dynamic. I can show you how. So, with your feet in position, as you inhale, shoulder blades together, knees pointed at each other. Now, as you inhale, raise your left leg. As you exhale, bring your left Heel closer to the ground and then up, five reps. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. One more. Then bring your left foot to the ground Check your alignment of your bridge again and then as you inhale, right leg up and uh, as you exhale. Three more. And feet to the ground, start releasing upper back, middle back, lower back, extend both legs, start releasing upper back, middle back, lower back, bring your knees to touch, feet wide and windshield wiper movements again. Relax your arms one more time. And then extend both legs. So you can see within a few minutes, you can engage almost every muscle block in the body. Especially we were working on the glutes and the hands and the spinal muscles and the core. Those are the four main areas which I find helpful as I prepare myself for a full marathon 
with the little experience I have. Bend both knees, bring your knees into your chest, give yourself a tight hug. And every yoga practice we finish with Shavasana, this practice of relaxation and awareness, complete relaxation in the physical body and complete awareness in mind, energy, thoughts, emotions, just awareness. Feet wider than your hips, arms wider than your shoulders, eyes closed. Shavasana practice is a good opportunity to visualize, to reflect. So on this race day for yourself, you can visualize for yourself whether you know the course or not. Like in my case, this is my first time in Jacksonville, Florida. I don't know this course. So I'm just visualizing not so much about the course, the terrain, how flat it is or how hilly it is. I'm just visualizing the energy. The energy is going to be palpable. As people start coming in, start gathering, people will be doing their own warm-up routine. And we have the starting line and the elite groups go first, right in the front and then everyone else follows and the marathon is going to begin. Then you can visualize your energy, your breath, keeping in the game, whatever happens. Being aware of your body, your mind, your thoughts, your emotions and enjoying, enjoying the atmosphere the energy, the cheers, strangers cheering for you. Especially as you get closer to the finish line, the last few kilometers. For me, that is the incredible experience I've had every time I've run the full marathon. Strangers lining up the streets, the roads, and just cheering for everyone without any discrimination, without any prejudice. That is the most beautiful sight and the most beautiful feeling and sensation. I think this is why I go back. My friends ask me, why are you running all these marathons? For me, it's just a self challenge and the experience, the energy, the vibrations the vibrations of the universe come together in that experience. So visualize for yourself, how are you going to feel at the finish line, whether you have a time target or not, whether you're an elite runner or an amateur beginner, or you have a little bit of experience like I have now, wherever you are, visualize. few more relaxing breaths in Shavasana. Slowly roll on to either side, left or right. Bring your knees closer to your chest, your neck also closer to your chest. Maybe give yourself a hug like in a fetal position. And in a few small steps, slowly, very slowly, come to seated. I hope this is useful for you. The practices of yoga, breathing. Thank you for practicing with me. I wish you a wonderful experience with your marathon. Just be aware of your body, mind, energy, emotions, thoughts and you're going to have a wonderful experience. Don't forget to smile at the finish line and finish with some style.
The best in me bows down to the best in you. Namaste. Just one more time.